Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Tuesdays with Neil. Sir, welcome. I made it. I'm here. Tuesday, I knew you would. If I'm not, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy thing about running errands and um, just missed the call, but uh, we're good. I'm all set here. Well, first of all, you are as dependable as a Swiss, Swiss watch. I mean, really, you are our Rolex. <laughs> Never been called a Rolex before. I can hear my dad laughing about that now. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not the impression he would have given you. I promise you. <laughs> I come from a Prop different this perspective. Is something I had to learn. <laughs> okay. okay. I come from a different perspective. <laughs> How about that? I will make sure the family heard that. They will appreciate yes, it. Very much so. I will appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the bizarre continues to happen. <laughs> I, look, I mean, I expected them to win, but they keep winning. I'll say they also scored on their first uh, uh, on their first drive against second straight week. And it was an impressive drive. Um, might have been their best drive of the season overall. That, that one against the Rams was, was pretty good. But the, the depth and the versatility uh, that they're adding now, um, I think that, above anything else, is really the eye-popping thing. Um, obviously, this is not an offense that you can expect to score, you know, four touchdowns a game or anything like that. But uh, they're capable of eating some possession, uh, running some stuff that a defense is not going to be fully prepared for. And I got to say, a, a large chunk of it seems to me like that the insertion of Roderick Jones at, at right tackle, the athleticism that he brings um, is opening up both their zone and their gap schemes. And the, the, the way that they're using that is a, it, it's a different wrinkle every week. We're seeing different things when he's in there. Um, I'm not sure if that means you can pin it on either Dan Moore, who we replaced once, or uh, uh, Chooks Okorafor, who he's replacing now. But Jones being in there, you're seeing a, a high-level athlete playing pretty well in, in the run game, and that is opening everybody else up. You know, he's, it seems like he's kind of the catalyst. I know how weird that is to say about a, an offensive lineman, but he's doing stuff that, that Trent Williams is doing. You know, in, in San Francisco, and it, it's it's a lot of fun to watch. And you're seeing uh, a, a versatile Steelers running game uh, kind of rising like a phoenix out of the ashes here. <laughs> they're they're capable of running the ball. We haven't really said that uh, ever this season, and it took them half the year to get kind of good uh, last year, and they they ended the year very effectively. Um, you're 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 seeing that in Pittsburgh now. Like they have an offensive identity, and with that. Uh, they're capable of, of winning games. I mean, they're probably a little bit better than Green Bay. I don't know by how much better, mm -hmm. um, kind of like what you alluded to. I don't know how, you know, I, I, they should have won this game. This is one that, that they really uh, needed to win and should have won and, and did. Probably got a little bit closer than you would have wanted it to be. But um, the return of Minka Fitzpatrick, which is imminent, that will happen eventually, I, I think is going to fix a lot of things within their secondary. And I don't know how many teams they're going to beat but I know that they're going to be a very tough team to beat when they have everything going. And I, I know how cliche that sounds, but they make people beat themselves, you know, and that's really what right. they did to Green Bay. And it seems like that that's going to be their strategy from here on out. Uh, Pat Fryermuth, doors open for him being back. What can he add? Uh, it, it, he might even be a bigger return than Minka in the sense that you're going to have a, a solid short field receiver who has blocking ability as well. Right now whatever trio of, of tight ends they're putting out there none of them can catch and none of them are particularly good run blockers to, to this point. Frymouth is going to be better than, than all of them in all of that but the experience that you're getting with Washington uh, with Hayward, with Williams when he's in, in there um, you're, you're going to have a nice, you know, assortment of tight end packages that you can run 
uh, within this, you know, increasingly versatile ground game. And Fryer Muth can catch the ball. You know, this, this right. is, you know, Pickett completed 14 passes last week. This is like 1983 football. Um, right. a, a, a solid seam target can open up, you know, that, that uh, infamous 13 to 18 yard range uh, as far as the passing game goes. It's going to expand their RPO game, which is almost non existent at this point. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things Fryermuth is going to bring uh, upon his return. And I would argue that. They have not had him pretty much all season. He's been out there. He's been dressed. He's caught a ball or two. But they haven't had the the, the peak Pat Farm with the guy that you expected to get 100 targets this season uh, for the Steelers. I, when you have that in there, it's a better receiving option, I think, overall, certainly in the short space, uh, than what they've been able to, to manufacture. And when you get that RPO game going, uh, those pop passes over the middle, the seam stuff down the middle – that opens stuff up on the outside, and I think the offense is going to be able to push back on a defense a little bit more than just playing the, the kind of swinging gate thing that they've been doing, particularly in the passing game. Okay. Uh, Johnson being back in the lineup, what has that meant? Uh, you, know, I, you and I talked about this last week because he's actually a better, as inconsistent as I personally think he is, he's still a better player at this stage than Pickens. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I expected more, I guess, from Johnson. And to be fair, you kind of have to grade both Johnson and Pickens on a bit of a curve because the passing game is just a mess. I mean, we're we're not seeing it, 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 every game. Pickett is missing open targets consistently. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's he's he's completing fourteen. He's missing on nine, and of those nine incompletions. I, I honestly feel like four or five of them a game are, are just simply bad throws, passes that should have been completed. Uh, Johnson's going to feel the effects of that. Certainly statistically, uh, his impact on the game is not at present at all. He had, he had one catch. You know, it, it, that's, that's not, in my opinion, it's not because Johnson can't get open. <laughs> uh, he's able to get open. They're not scheming their receivers open enough. Um, I, I don't. That that's the major criticism that I would have of the offense. They they don't work. Uh, to, they don't do enough to get the receivers um, running in concert with one another, uh, running combo routes, things of that nature. To you know, let your receivers try to make a play. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just kind of throwing them in one place, take it or leave it. You know, they're not doing anything with them to to try to open them up. And your quarterback is not throwing the ball accurately enough for yards after the catch. And we've talked about this the last three years. The ball isn't going in a place where the receiver can catch it and turn and run. Um, it, it's, they're not open enough, which you might put on them, but some of that is a late delivery from a, a, a mid-arm uh, strength quarterback. Um, they're not being put in position to succeed as much. I, I think because of that, Johnson is not the impact player that I, I thought he would be. Um, we'll see, though. I, I think there are some, you know, probably some miscommunication, um, and some inability against Green Bay that we didn't quite anticipate. We'll see what happens against a, you know, a vastly better defense uh, in Cleveland. Not that Green Bay has a bad defense, but it, Cleveland's is really good. Um, they're going to have to get Johnson the ball uh, if they want to be consistent um, in, in running it the way that you have to assume that they're going to. There's going to be plays that Pickett is going to have to deliver a, a, a good pass to Johnson. who's going to have to get open. They're going to have to make plays uh, after the catch as well. Um, I, there's a lot riding on Johnson going into this game. But as far as a comparison to him and Pickens, it's not even close. I mean, Johnson is a pro. Um, he's got, what, 400-some-odd targets more than Pickens does in his career. And that gap is probably going to continue to expand because Pickens, it, it, he's not nuanced enough yet. Um, as a route runner, he's not all that hard to, to cover. Uh, it's great that he can make the, the highlight reel catches and everything, but he, the one thing you'll notice is he is almost always covered whenever they get him the ball. Um, there's a reason for that. He's not getting himself open, but he's also young. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect him to be better than Deontay Johnson right now. There's there's more work that he needs to do, and I, I would expect him to, to continue to do it. Um, you know, hopefully the the sulkiness part of his game goes away after a bit, and I get that you're frustrated if that's you know all the, that you're getting the ball. But 
um, they'll they'll call his number. He'll be in a position to make a play, and you hope that uh, he's he's able to make it when they do. All right. It, so yeah, let me talk about the Pickens part for a moment. I think there's an assumption that certain guys can just get out there in a straight line blow by somebody. You can't do that in the NFL. You have to be able to make no. a move, whether it's a double, something subtle, just to give yourself that additional step, and then with a burst you can get past somebody. It seems like as a young receiver he doesn't quite have that yet. I'd, I'd go a step farther and say he needs to do it, but not even necessarily on the play in question. He needs to show that he can run a slant before a cornerback is going to be yeah. worried about a move to the inside. Uh, that's where the route running part takes more of an effect. Johnson, when you see Johnson get open, Johnson's like three yards open on a lot of fly routes. And right. it's not because Johnson has world-class speed. It's not mm-hmm. because he's insanely quick. It's because they are so afraid of him, his footwork, him cutting back, him running digs, his, him running unders, things like that. And he, he can put a subtle move, and they assume that he's going there and he's going to get himself open over the top. Pickens doesn't really run much right now. And everyone's going to yell at the offensive coordinator. It's, it's not that simple. You, you can't call stuff that you know doesn't work. You know, just he's not a video game character. It's not all one, right. this, one in the same. He's got to be able to do it. And if they're not calling him to do it, it's because he's not showing that he can do it. Um, what I, I'd make this comparison. I think we've said this in the past. One thing that uh, got us really excited about Martavis Bryant back in 2015 was the fact that they were calling slants for him, hitches. He was running professional-level routes. Mm-hmm. That made him even more dangerous over the top because now it's like this is not a one-trick pony guy anymore. Mm-hmm. Now he can catch you in, in a, a skinny post after five yards. You have to be aware of that as a cornerback. That makes it a lot harder to keep that cushion, uh, stay on top of him, and be in position if he breaks. That slows the cornerback down just enough that you can get outside him and, and go. Pickens doesn't have that yet. Or at the very least, uh, we know that he's not running those routes particularly often. But uh, I, I will say they're, they're struggling quite a bit uh, to get the ball down the field. Uh, it, it doesn't look to me in, in all 22 angles, it doesn't look to me like Pickens is really running all that stuff in, in a way that makes me think they're trying to set something up. Um, that's more of the, the evolution of his game that, that needs to take place. And maybe that's I mean, there's still a lot of season left. We'll, we'll see you know, how it goes. But he's far from a finished product. We know that. He's a great athlete, um, explosive player, a, a, you know, long strider, big play type of guy. He's got to develop that smaller game in order to bring everything out. Uh, you had a, a weekend where there were, what, six essential walk-off games? And some of them involved teams that you didn't think were going to lose and did. Uh, how tight is this league right now at this point? I mean, I know there's, there's always going to be a couple of exceptional teams, but how tight in reality is the league now? You know, I, I just had a conversation with somebody in the league casually um, yesterday morning about this. And this, this is, you know, obviously pre Bills Broncos. The sense in the NFL is not that uh, there are, you know, no good teams. It's that the bottom level is kind of the same. The mid level is expanded. Those yeah. mid, middle group teams right. are a lot better than they have been in the past. And because of that, nobody's really pulling away. I mean, I, I, I think Philadelphia is the, the top record, right? Eight and one. Yes. You don't watch Philadelphia and think that this is a world beating team. You know, they're no. not destroying right. everybody they play. That's uh, right. They're, they're a very good football team. Um, it, they're competing. You know, it, it's, it's hard to beat Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not walking over anybody either. Um, that's your top level. But at this point, you really don't know where it's going to go. But you have uh, pretty, you know, I, I think it's fair to say, kind of disappointing starts from Cincinnati, from Buffalo. Uh, these are teams that are on national TV often enough that you're noticing that they're not winning these games. Um, the lack of Rodgers is, you know, the worst thing that's happened to primetime football, I think, ever. Oh. <laughs> Jets are constantly on. Um, oh. Therefore, they're always a talking point. Oh. And, you know, it, Good, good for them and for, for being what they are, but they're not going to be a great team uh, with the quarterback that they have. You know, I think there's there's maybe a they're maybe a step below where the Steelers are. Um, the Steelers are a good summation of that mid level, though. This is a, a this is a difficult team to beat. They might not beat you, 
but they can make you beat yourself if if you allow them to drag you allow them to drag you down to their level to play the game in the muck to to throw style points out the window when when you have to to swing with them they're going to beat you and we've seen it several times already this season um on the whole overall are are they a good football team it really doesn't look like it but they just make you play their way and it, it gets frustrating i think there are a lot of teams that are like that and the good teams have not yet overcome that we're not even sure who it is i'm not even sure who the, who the best team is from what That's i've right. seen to this point you yeah. know certainly philadelphia is is a quality team um i don't know if they're better than kansas city i don't know if they're they're better than detroit you know that's a team that's, that's also very hard to beat um they could beat themselves but it, it's just tougher for an opponent to to really knuckle down and and take them out over four quarters and it, it's it creates i think two you know kind of conflicting narratives is one it's a boring league nobody is good it's not all that great these are the the preconception going into a game um it's a great game if we think the two teams are really good and it comes down to the wire it's still a mid game if it, it's two below average teams that go down to the wire i think it depends on which side of the fence you're on um, I, I personally find NFL football to be, you know, to some degree good football. Mm-hmm. Uh, you watch the Jets play often enough, so you'll, you'll be able to challenge what I just said pretty easily, and I get that. But yeah. uh, top to bottom, I think Denver played pretty well last night. It wasn't I, Buffalo's I best game, but Denver played pretty well. You got to yep. you got to tip your cap to them and say, you know, just because they're not particularly good doesn't mean they're incapable of of playing. Uh, well here and there on a on a 17 game season you know this isn't college you, you, when you get Penn State versus directional state Penn State's going to beat them by 30 most mm-hmm. of the time and the other times mm-hmm. they're going to win by 15 you mm-hmm. know it's, it's not like that in the NFL they're, they're much more balanced uh, the mid level is a lot closer to the top than people think that they are you know there's a couple plays every game um, make a difference and some teams make those plays and some teams don't but I, I just think it, it's it's the rise and the proliferation of, of the middle class of the NFL right now. They're stealing wins from the, the what we think to be the upper class uh, probably a bit more often than they have in the past. Without Aaron Rodgers, I feel like the Jets, this is a waste of a terrific defense. I just feel like it's a waste of a terrific defense based on how they play offense. Yeah, Robert Sala is such a great coach. He's got them going yes. all yeah. the time, regardless of, I mean, it, it's it's never good to lose your starting quarterback, but in a way, it, it you'd rather have it happen, you know, like in in mini camp, than you would mm-hmm. four right. plays into the season, right? Especially on the national stage in such an emotionally fired up game at home, prime time, everybody is watching this game. It's just oh, it's like mm-hmm. that much. You could see it in Salah's face. He's not going to tell you that, but that had to be just rough to get through the rest of that game and they and they came back and, and won that was a great football game um they're playing high level defensive football i you know go back to the last question too i might even argue that you know maybe we're seeing better defensive football being played you know jim schwartz has done a phenomenal job in cleveland um he probably caught one in the chin from from baltimore this past week but we've seen them play at high level high level for two three quarters every game it seems like and the jets are the same way you know how do they get four wins out of completely substandard quarterback play how are they doing that that's how effective defensive football seems to be this season and you know those are definitely two of the top defenses they might not even be the best defense either one of them uh, a lot of teams are, are playing really good defense, I and mean, you're seeing great individual seasons from a lot of players as well. So um, it, I would imagine, you know, you can't fire Salah after this after this season. And, you know, every day it's Aaron Rodgers throwing more rhetoric out there about how he's going to play. I, I don't know whether he'll play or not, but if they had Aaron Rodgers performing, even at the level that he was last season, which I didn't feel was particularly good, Right, you're in a real tough time beating them. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like if they get into the playoffs with Rodgers, watch out. That's that's not a team you want to play. No. Always a pleasure, even if it is. I'm here. I just walked in. 
As always, the pleasure is mine. I hope you guys have a good day. Neil Coolong.